All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. And Jake and I are working on a series called Who Are the Pharisees? That's right. And so if you ever wanted to know who are the Pharisees, then this is the place for you. This is actually stop number four on the Pharisee train. So uh, if you missed the first three, go back and check those out first. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jake, how do they find this? What do they need to do? If you uh, go to the YouTube or the Google machine and type Sabbath Lounge, you'll find us there. And then if you look up who are the Pharisees or the Pharisees with Sabbath Lounge, you'll find us. And you'll find these, this series of videos. That's right. And uh, there'll be a place on our website under a section called Teaching. And there'll be a place where you can download PDFs of this as well that'll have some links to other things. But And I bet you could down them, download them pretty darn fast. That's right. Because they're PDFs. Yep. Yep. That's right. And But we appreciate you stopping by your time today. And we just ask you would share this with someone. And uh, we'll dive right into Who Are the Pharisees? Part 4. Right. History of the Pharisees. Have you been called a Pharisee, Matt? Yes, I have. And you listening may have been called one as well. So, Mark 7, 5 says, Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with the unwashed hands? It's like unwashed people eating with unwashed hands. Gross. Yuck. So, yeah, here, so this is a, the standard, uh, in parentheses, uh, where uh, Jesus declared all foods clean. But really, it's talking about washing your hands before and, you eat. And a side note, you know, if you research washing your hands before you eat in the Torah, what do you come up with? Ooh, uh... Goose egg. I think you find uh, you have to wash your hands with goose eggs in order to. <laughs> nothing. I don't think there is a Torah command about washing your hands before you eat. No, and we, and that's kind of interesting because such a deal is made in our society and our culture about that, but yet Torah didn't seem to think it was a big deal to mention it. You know, I've heard some people say, "Well, it's just common sense." I was like, "Well, really? Was it?" If, so, if it was so, it's such common sense. Uh, then the guy that uh, was birthing babies and discovered the the mystery of running water being uh, better for you than tubs of <laughs> disgusting water <laughs> uh, wouldn't have been so important in history. But yeah. yet yep. he was. <laughs> yes, but it is interesting that uh, you know um, such as so much is made of this, and I think especially in this particular scripture, a lot of people think that the Torah told you exactly how it did talk about washing. There are several times when you were supposed to wash garments or clothes or your body, but um, it, it, there wasn't a specific command about when you sit down and eat, wash your hands. Right. So that would be a tradition of the elders, not a command of Yahweh then. And I think, too, what they had made a tradition was even the certain way, the procedure about how you washed your hands. It wasn't just rubbing your hands together and singing the ABCs. Yeah, 20 seconds, everybody. Yep. Now, Matt and I aren't saying washing your hands is bad. <laughs> no, we, before I, you I, eat. we like to do it. <laughs> But yeah, here he specifically I, says, "I really like to know that when I shake your hand, that you've washed your hand at some point recently. At some point, yeah, that makes me feel better. If not, then that's really gross, especially if you're handling my food." Yes. Um. So we're here. Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of the elders? That's what they're interested in. The tradition of the elders. So then. It continues on. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Elohim, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of Elohim that you may keep your own tradition. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, when if someone's going to come to me and say, keeping the Torah is... Uh, is 
what the Pharisees talked about makes me a Pharisee because I promote Torah keeping, they got to deal with this verse, this set of verses where they did not hold to the commandments of Elohim. They put them aside to keep the traditions of men. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's crystal clear to me that they did not do it. That's exactly what it says, black and white. And so this is a scripture to know and to be able to point people and, uh, and say, well, explain what this means. Um, you know, have someone put this into, uh, you know, maybe their own words and exp explain it that way. But, um, but definitely, um, this tradition of washing the pots and cups, you know, there was a certain, I think this also was going back to that scripture where he talks about washing the, um, the outside of the cup and making it all clean and the inside is all nasty. And that, you know, he makes an analogy later uh, to the Pharisees about that they were doing that. So, anyway, there definitely was made up tradition and things that they did that are not found in Torah. Right. There were definitely things found in Torah, like if you find mold in this object, then you have to break it and destroy it. And there are things like that, but but not the specific way to wash it. Yeah, and I, the priests did have uh, commands of washing things, but, I mean, th that was a sp for specific situations, not eating yeah. your dinner. Yeah. And then John 6, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And so then he says... Uh, the disciples say, uh, hey, this is an hard teaching. Yeah. How, how, and then remember, everyone leaves after he says that, right? Yeah. And so the people leave and Messiah does not chase them and he doesn't water down his message to gain numbers for his congregation. Whereas, you know. We'll run into other scenarios later well, on. But. In fact, I think what we find when we walk in relationship with with our Father, um, He sometimes weeds people out. Yeah, and I think Yeshua was doing that here. Um, he he kind of wants to see th that's what testing is. It's kind of seeing where you are, and you know this is a form of testing. And um, yeah, he's oh, saying this, seeing what happens. Yeah. Who's really with me? Who's like going, whoa, I don't know about this guy. Yeah. A lot of people remove themselves from the, from the equation. Yeah. And then Acts 6, 10. Yep. So this is, uh, if you know about Acts 6, this is the, the Stephen incident. And this will make a point for us here. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke, being Stephen. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against Elohim. And it continues. And they set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Yeshua of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. So, um, yeah, go back. So that's kind of the point here is they sought out people to be, uh, to be set up as false witnesses which the Torah did say something about. Right. Do not bear false witness. I don't, it almost like it's one of the 10 too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's and it's almost straight out of the, the verbiage there. Mm -hmm. So they set up false witnesses. These, these law keepers we're talking about, these Pharisee law keepers set up these false witnesses to lie about Stephen's message. And the lie about his message was that Stephen is telling people to change that Yeshua is going to change the customs of Moses. That was the lie the Pharisees taught. Mm -hmm. Matt, that Stephen over there, he's telling people 
that Yeshua is going to change the customs of Moses. Can you believe this guy? No. And Stephen's over there saying, hey, I didn't say none of that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so. In fact, he gives them a good tongue lashing here. That's right. And then. And they were pricked in their hearts. That's right. Okay. So this will this will come up later. So, and then Acts twenty one twenty one, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Hmm. They got him here because Paul is teaching against circumcision. So, let's see. They're saying that uh, Paul is teaching the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Okay, so that's what they're telling Paul. These guys are telling you, telling us that you're teaching to forsake Moses. Okay, go to the next, go to the next slide. The next 2124B, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. Hmm. So the Pharisees, I'm gathering, tend to have this pattern of lying about people. And the lie that they're telling about people is that they're forsaking the Torah. Mm hmm. Bearing false witness and um, convincing other people about these things yeah yeah and we see here paul says or they're telling paul uh hey go tell them there's nothing in what they're saying go tell people that they're lying they're lying when they're saying that paul teaches against the law mm -hmm. yeah. so if you want <laughs> so who's the pharisee who is the pharisee the one uh, that said that says to keep the Torah, or is the Pharisee the one saying that Yeshua came and did away with the Torah? Mm. Those are kind of your options here. Yeah, yeah. And we're not saying that Paul was against the law because he wasn't. You know, he was pronomian. He's for the law, right? But people interpret it uh, as as if he's not right, and that's. And that's the Pharisees' interpretation of Paul. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of these verses. Yeah. The Pharisees interpreted Paul to be <clears throat> against the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's the, uh, the picture that they painted him. Right. With. You know, it's kind of like a conspiracy, really. It, it was. Yeah. And they knowingly did it falsely. Yeah. They yeah. knew he wasn't against the law, mm -hmm. but they put that message out there. And now all of... You know, now we all grew up with Pharisee teaching of Paul was teaching against the law. Yeah. So that goes right into this, the characteristics of the Pharisees, Jake. And what did they say? They said that Messiah changed the custom of Moses, and they lied about Stephen's message. So. So there's a proof that they're lying about two things there and trying to convince other people about, about, um, about these things. So, and, and, you know, I encourage you to go look at the words that Stephen says, because those are some of the most powerful words uh, found, I think, in the New Testament, where he just goes on that rant and uh, just rips them. And, um, you know, in, in that particular rant and the words he talks about, uh, there's a lot of Torah keeping and a lot of law keeping in those words. And I think that's what made them so upset is because deep down they knew they knew the truth and they knew what he was saying was right. And right. It, it just infuriated them instead of convicting them and them dropping on their hands and knees going, you know, I, I'm, you know, please forgive me. They uh, they just were like, ah, no, kill him. Yeah. So you have the two choices, repentance or rebellion. And they yeah. chose rebellion. Yeah. So, the, yeah. So these are the two we just ran across. The characteristics of the Pharisees, they say Messiah changed the customs of Moses, and they say that Paul taught against the law. That's what Pharisees say.
Ooh, there's more. So some of the other characteristics that they have or had is they preached Torah plus Talmud for salvation. So it wasn't enough for Torah. Torah wasn't enough. You had to do a little extra. Well, uh, additionally, teaching even Torah for salvation is incorrect. So they were incorrect plus yeah. incorrect. That's true. What's uh, zero plus zero? Zero. There you go. So they kept the traditions of their elders, which were the uh, the rabbis or the the learned men before them. That we would we might call those church fathers if if we were today, right? Well, today we'd call them people with PhDs, yeah. Because uh, you know, a Pharisee is someone with a PhD, but his master's and his doctorate of divinity, right? And so they held these anti-biblical requirements for joining their group or denominationalism. You know, this is definitely a group of people. It's a club where there were certain rules and requirements. And part of this being in this club is the social status mm -hmm. and being seen by men and the way people thought of you. Um, you know, there are a lot of things went into this besides just them doing, you know, uh, going a beyond what was written in the law but um but definitely they they liked um people thinking they were holy and righteous and 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 just awesome yep anything else here uh no all right more characteristics of the pharisees they sought to grow their kingdom and they looked down on outsiders so um, this is, this, this is kind of summing up some of the things we read, for, we did in, uh, the verses we read in other, uh, episodes. So go back and watch those if you're wondering where we pulled this stuff from. But, um, yes, so they did these things also. They looked down on the outsiders, uh, see, uh, I shall call no man common or unclean, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of growing the father's true kingdom... They were more interested in growing their own following or their own, you know, and that's why you do see um, Paul at some point he quotes and he said, some say I follow Paul, some say I follow Apollos. And, and that's where that, that takes you is everybody gets in these camps kind of like denominationalism mm -hmm. where people follow certain people and certain topics. And, and we, we can do this in our own Torah circles and we do the same thing sometimes when we go, I listen to this teacher and I like what they say. And then, and then we end up, we become can, followers of them. Yeah. You know, we become followers of them and sometimes fight with each other about stupid stuff that it doesn't, you know, that doesn't matter. That's just a dude <laughs> over there. And, and he knows, he knows the same, the same stuff, you know, uh, maybe he just speaks eloquently and, and, yeah, and with or with authority. So don't be deceived by that, and and know that that in the end, even us, all of us, we're just people, and uh, you've got to know what His Word says for yourself, and not what other people say it says. Yeah. So if you find yourself being uh, followers of Sabbath Lounge in that way, uh, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. 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 And if you find yourself arguing with other other Torah keepers about, well, I like this guy and I don't. And, you know, just back off, quit talking <laughs> because you're just going to go. There's no reason to have that strife and division with that other person. And, uh, you know, don't kindle that for sure. You know, that's something you need to backpedal away and, and, uh, and try not to do because it's just not necessary to, to cause that rift if you don't have to, because we're not all going to see the, some, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, people out there saying different things and we don't all agree with everybody at the same time. But but the regardless is, if that's our focus, our focus is wrong. Our focus should be the Torah. And and if you haven't read the Torah, then I, I would say turn this off right now and, and go read the Torah. You know, if you're new to all this, uh, start at Genesis and uh, and start reading uh, from the very beginning of the book and just read it with an open mind and see what he says. Yep. And just to just to catch any um I don't know. Any strange comments. Yes, we also are saying follow Yeshua. 
Yes. Not, yes. Not just the Torah. Not just the Torah. <laughs> We're yeah, saying right. uh, follow Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, which it's follows the Torah. Torah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, so it looks like we're going to play a little uh, one off the other here. And we'd also, uh, something that you could piggyback off on this is uh, we did a a series about the Nicolaitans, Mm -hmm. which kind of overlaps with some of these things we're about to talk about. So that's something to, to look at and... And um, and study it out for yourself. Um, if you if you if you're not familiar with the Nicolaitans, um, see see who they are. See what what that means. But here we are talking about the church. All right. See if this uh, rings any bells from what we just talked about. All right. They say that Messiah changed the customs of Moses. Hmm. And then they also say that Paul taught against the law. Those those ones kind of line right up with what the Pharisees were doing. Yeah, lying about Stephen's message and lying about Paul's message. And and we do want to be careful here. You know, um, we're not saying that everybody in church necessarily does this, but I think this is what many people have taught, and many people are in ignorance. Yeah. You know, it's not like that they have malicious intent. They're not, you know, I don't think they're, you know, trying to— to harm people necessarily, but in some, but it does harm people because it, it, it isn't right. And it's something you kind of have to learn and study out of, but, um, yeah, I'm glad you made that distinction, Matt, because this is the system, not the, yeah. not the people. Yeah. Uh, the people have, have, uh, inherited a system of lies is what, what the, that's is. right. Because I, in, you know, and you, you and I both, we've known very godly men and women that, uh, that were were very very sincere about their faith and sincere and they they weren't trying they weren't trying to do that they they would be offended if if we said that you know right. that, that's not what they were trying to do but but it is what they inherited yeah and 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 so we're saying if you're new to all this we you know we've studied it out and came to the conclusion that we inherited lies uh, from Pharisaical type teachings. And we had to learn and grow and go back and see what does the Torah actually say and not what do men say. Claim of it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and what it's become today is what do men say about men who talked about it a long time ago, <laughs> who talked about it, you know, who read about the people that wrote about I mean, it the just commentary like, on it's commentary. like a copy of a copy of a copy. And uh, yeah, that's... That that's not the right way to do it, and that's not what Yah intended. He intends to write the Torah, write His words, His commands on, on our hearts, and that's a process that uh, you know we believe it, it, it is is starting, and He wants to start. It doesn't have to. Yes, we know in the end times He says He's going to do that, but we're supposed to be in the process of working on that, right? Okay. And some oh here's the Nicolaitan things yeah so some characteristics of the church is that the Pharisees ruled over the people see the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of Balaam so uh, we did a, a series about the Nicolaitans who they are and their connection to Balaam and the connection in Revelation and we called it does Yeshua hate right. Yeah, so we pulled the Pharisees in here. The Pharisees ruled over the people. And so, uh, as we discussed in the last episode, um, people would go listen to what they said and not uh, not test it, essentially. And so, therefore, when you're taking part in a church service without testing what the church service is telling you, you're you're in that relationship where mm-hmm. you have this ruler over you now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Messiah should be our our go between between the Father and us, and that's so anyone has access. It's yeah. not like you need to be a special person up in the at the head of a on a podium speaking to a bunch of people. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I heard people say things like, "Well, I don't know. I just got to see what my preacher says about that. I don't know." I'm like, I was always like, "What?" You you can't you can't know, 
You know, I, I, that that was always hard for me to compute. I, I, I didn't ever see that in scripture, but a lot of people think that, and that is part of this doctrine um, that uh, that is c- contaminated people's thinking. And like I said, it's kind of goes with our culture, our society. I mean, that's the whole world. Look at what happened when a group of people who wear wet, uh, white coats and have de- letters behind their name came out a few years ago and said certain things. Hey, put this stuff in yeah, your arm. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, put this the thing on your face or it's going to, you know, you're, you're going to have problems. And everybody's like, okay, they spoke. I must do what they say. Yeah. And you saw all of these people around the world just buy it hook, line, and sphincter, as they say. <laughs> do they say that? They do. Okay. They do. So it seems, that might be a Texas saying. <laughs> yes. It seems pretty appropriate. But, uh, but, but we have different versions of it, and that's a version of it that we saw in the world. And, and unfortunately, many people... We'll even do that, and I think that's one reason why so many children and you know so many children that come out of Christian homes today get seem so lost sometimes and don't don't have the Torah in their hearts and the in in, in God's scripture in their minds um, because their their families do put more hope, faith, and trust in the the priest of this day than they do uh, his word. Right. And and um, we, we go, well, the expert said this. The historian said this instead of going, wait a minute. And I think the other thing, one more little soapbox, I have to, I'm going to jump on real quick and then I'll jump right off of it, I promise. <laughs> and that is the idea of we need to stop. I think, where did I get this from? I might, I can't, I have to give credit where credit is due. And I think it came from Fiery Faith Ministry, James and Leah Carruthers. I think he said it maybe. And he talked about we've got to quit calling these Bible stories. We need to quit right now. We don't need to tell our children or anyone else that these are not Bible stories because it kind of makes them to be like Untrue. fairy tales. Yeah, that, that this this is our history. Exactly. This, you know that, that's a better way to say it, or you may come up with some better way. But I kind of thought that was a good idea. So um, anyway, that's my soapbox. I'm jumping off. That's an important box to be on, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, but definitely the Pharisees ruled over people and enforced rules and traditions and procedures upon people that they themselves um, would watch people struggle with and would not do anything but look down upon them from their lofty position and somehow feel better about themselves. Right. So, oh, the other thing that I was going to say is what does Yeshua hate? Um Several times in Scripture, I don't think we brought it out in this 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 study yet, but he does call them at some point the synagogue of Satan, and um, you know those are those are pretty harsh words. And, no, no, uh, Matt. So. <laughs> Yeshua wouldn't say mean things. Yeah, yeah, he did. That would probably hurt someone's feelings That's to hear right. that. That's right. And uh, and you, brood of vipers, brood of vipers, which are all I would say, they you know it's interesting. Does he come out and say I hate the Pharisees? Not necessarily, but he does put them. You know, it, you know, you, you put them in the same category as Satan and vipers. I mean, that's that's not a good place. You don't want to be in that spot. Yeah, whitewashed tombs. Yeah, Dead dirty walking, dirty cups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You dirty cup. Dirty cup. Yeah. All right. So then, characteristics of the church continued. You have your denominational requirements for membership. We talked about uh, the, you know, mission statements and stuff like that. Um, And then they preach a new moral Torah, right? Which is separate from the Torah. No, just the moral laws. And they keep the traditions of the elders or the church fathers, as we mentioned. So <clears throat> instead of, it's like uh, in the verses where it says you keep the traditions of the elders and violate the commandments of Yah, when he's talking about washing your hands, you could easily turn that to uh, Christmas. You're keeping mm-hmm. the traditions of the elders 
and not the commands of the father. So, um, yeah, it just applies to everything. I mean, you gotta be careful. You're not just following to follow. Yeah. Well, and it makes me think of, um, just like what we talked about in an earlier episode about a mission statement, a uh, mission statement for denomination. Is, is it even necessary? Uh, you know, I don't think it is. You know, I think the Torah, it, unless your mission statement is quoting a quote directly from, from the word of God somewhere. Um, I don't know that it's necessary because anything you say there is just you making stuff up. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah, like we mentioned, <clears throat> it's uh, Torah is our mission statement, and Yeshua is our leader, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and then, you know, I think back through times and things that I remember people arguing about in church, and I, I have seen people argue. Now, I grew up in the Church of Christ denomination, and I can remember, like, one church wanted to build a fellowship hall so they could hang out and have a meal, and people divided over that issue and like, well, that's not in scripture to have a fellowship hall. And that they, they, they weren't wrong. And I remember looking at it even as a, as a young kid and trying to go, yeah, there's, when as you get older, you go, yeah, there's a lot of things that they do uh -huh. that, that they, that they say you're supposed to have, you know, the, uh, you know, the, from youth ministers to, you know, f f all kinds of things, you know, f microphones, lights, air conditioning, you know, th those are all things that, um, you know, that just, uh, it, but, but people would divide over those things. And even like uh, the one cup versus multi cup, you know, uh, in, I don't in, know that one. Yeah. So like uh, in communion. Oh, okay. So one, that's cup what or, I thought you were saying. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. So yeah, you definitely don't want to show up in the little country town and, uh, be at the end of that cup. <laughs> right. So that's not not the best. So, yeah. Uh, you just can't think about um, everyone that backwashed it, especially the guy uh, that's, uh, you know, got the big chew in his mouth and got tobacco juice running down his face or something. <laughs> nice. And you don't want to be behind that guy. So. No. And then, after all that, someone's got to finish it off too, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The yeah, guy in front gets to finish mm -hmm. it off. It seems like an old... Uh, church camp skit actually oh my goodness so, um but regardless uh you know people uh make all these traditions and these rules and and and, and most of the time they just cause division they cause chaos and the same thing can happen in in torah communities and that's why we have to default back to what does his word say and we have to know it we have to understand it put it in practice and not rely on other people to do it for us because if we rely on other people to do it for us you know uh, it reminds me think of it reminds me of um, was it pt barnum who said there was a fool born every second or something and uh you know yes you know there are many people that are going to take advantage of of you if you have that mindset of um i'm just gonna let other people tell me what to do because they sure will they will they will happily tell you what to do and mm -hmm. they will lead you down the path of hell if you let them right so there are people who don't care about you and i'm not we're not saying that everybody in the church is that way that's not what we're saying but but we're saying just like in the words of the famous songwriter from the Midwest, I don't think he, this was original to him, but John Cougar Mellencamp had a line in his, one of his songs that said, um, it, it, you know, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Sounds like tiger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a tiger. That's for one special listener out there. Oh. <laughs> so, but, but, but that is, that is, seems to be very true. Um, you know, no, you know, we need to know what what his word says and put it in practice, put it in our hearts and not rely on other people to tell us what it means. And and that's that's what we're saying. We're not saying that everyone that's part of church is bad. That's not that's not this. That's not what we're saying. Yeah, we're not trying to beat up the church necessarily. We're just saying that uh, typically if you're going to get called a Pharisee, that's the direction it's coming from. Yeah. So we're going to we're just trying to show you 
hey, there's some similarity. There's a Venn diagram that, uh, and you know who loves Venn diagrams is the vice president. Oh, really? So um, she is all about the Venn diagrams. So this one's for you. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. I'm sure she's watching. Good. So then another characteristic of the church, they seek to grow their kingdom. Have you heard of these uh, mega churches, Matt? I believe I have. I've driven past a few of them. May I have been in the, uh, you know, past the doors of a few. You know, I thought uh, in Pennsylvania we had some mega churches, and then I came to Texas, and it was like, like oh, every that's a church, every building I pass can hold ten thousand people, and it's got that little cross on top. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, yeah. and they're like, they're like two miles apart. Yeah, yeah. I'm like man. There's a lot of people that live here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people. But, uh, a lot of people that go to church in the in the south. Yeah, I mean, think about it, Matt. Pastor always gets paid, right? You're Pastor getting gets paid. you're getting ten percent of everything that want every of ten thousand Sabbatarians, well, Sundaytarians yes. that come in there. Mm -hmm. You're probably not hurting. Yeah. Also, notice where do they put mega churches like that? They go and target they go to the poor communities, don't they? <laughs> yes. They go, we're going to put that big church right here. These, no, they don't. They go to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> they, well, they, <laughs> no, they go usually to these very suburban, very domesticated, very nice. White collar. Very, uh, you know, looks like a lot of times they have nice homes, drive nice cars. And they're like, that's where we want to put it. Yeah, uh, those we want their money. Dirty rich sinners need a lesson. That's right. That's right. So I always find that interesting that they now I, I say that, you know, sometimes you will see a church do satellites, uh, satellite campuses in, in, in impoverished communities and, and they do try to give back to a certain extent. Like I said, I know we keep harsh, harshing, harping, harping on some of these churches, but we're just saying if you're not that church, that's then right. you shouldn't be complaining you. about what that's we're right. saying. That's right. right? If that's you right. throw a rock into a pack of dogs, you know which one you hit? The one that yelps. No. Right? No. So, uh, and we're not saying we're perfect. We're not saying that we do everything exactly the way it's supposed to be. And, but, but the deal is, but if you're so yelping, yeah, then, yeah. Then maybe uh, maybe there's something to that. Maybe the truth hurts. Yeah. So, but that's not our listeners. We know our listeners are perfect. They, right. they would never do any of that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's our comparison. And that's... Uh, that's the end of the matter. That's, who the, that's, that's every last drop of the matter. So who are the so Pharisees, Matt? The Pharisees? We, we were trying to figure that out. Well, in, this. in the end... I think what you see in the Pharisees is kind of what we talked about in these last two ones. They seem to sum it up pretty well to me is that they're a group of people who lord over others, who love to be looked by other men and elevated into lofty positions, and they love to hear the praises of other people to go, man, you're so smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where would I be without you? Can you tell me about this? You know, they they that's the kind of people they love love that and and they have an answer for these things but then st often their answer isn't rooted in in God's word or his message or messiah himself it's 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 uh, rooted in things that just puff them up more like hey you know you need to buy my book my book will tell you how to be speaking of that Matt's book comes out soon so yes yes that's right that's right that's right. Soon, <laughs> soon it is coming. Maybe by the time you listen to this, it will already be out. Perfect. So, so yes, but the point is, um, yeah. So, how would you define or sum this up? So, there, yeah, there's a question here. So, did I? Did we say who were the Pharisees? Is that the title of this? It who looks like it's are. who. Ooh, maybe that means something. Maybe. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we just don't know grammar. But it can be that. Um point is, um 
just to summarize, the Pharisees were not Torah keepers. They were murderous uh, man-pleasers who wanted to keep hold of their power. So if anyone calls you a Pharisee, now you'll know. Well, what are the... Remember we started this with, well, ask them what they mean. What's a Pharisee? Why would... What in me screams Pharisee to you? Yeah. 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 Ask them to clarify what that means. So... And I would say you can't say Pharisee without saying hypocrite because they were very hypocritical and that seems to fit them and Yeshua said that about them multiple times. Right. Oh, that's an important point that we didn't bring up on the hypocrite uh, line. Um, perhaps we'll do a, an episode of just hypocrites. But just real quick, it's um, when there, when people would say that uh, – Paul was only saying to do certain things to gain audience with the Jews. That's what's called a hypocrite, you see, because he's play acting. He's saying one thing and doing another. So he's acting a part to gain an audience. That's called a hypocrite. Mm. So I don't think Paul was a hypocrite, and uh, but the Pharisees were. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's a little teaser. Yep, good. Well said. Well, we're coming to the end of this, and we just ask that you would find this playlist and find the PDF on our website, sabbathlounge.com. And please share this with others. Share this with anyone you think might be interested. Please leave us comments. Uh, maybe tell us about your story. of uh, Maybe maybe you've been like a Pharisee and, and, and talk about how uh, you came out of that. But uh, we do want to hear from you, and please uh, give us some feedback we also have an email if you email um sabbath uh i don't remember what the email is i think it's sabbathlounge.com what is it that's not an email address <laughs> <laughs> it's probably no. in the contacts page on sabbathlounge.com yes yes i think it think it is so um it's something simple so anyway you'll figure it out go to the <laughs> contacts page on sabbathlounge.com and if when you write in there it'll come to matt and we'll delve into it that's right so it is i found it it is sabbathlounge at gmail.com Ooh, perfect i'll repeat sabbathlounge at gmail.com uh, we'll come and uh, we will see that and send us an email with questions, comments, um, anything you want to say about that, Jake? Nope. And well, we appreciate you hanging in there with us and uh, we look forward to uh, something else uh, soon that we're going to be talking about. We encourage you to first read your Torah, read your Bible and study and see what it says from the front to the end. And uh, we, that's what we want you to do. And um, we ask that you'd share this with people. And uh, this is Matt and Jake signing out.